Hey Vsauce, Michael here. There's a famous way to seemingly create chocolate out of nothing. Maybe you've seen it before. This chocolate bar is four squares by eight squares. But if you cut it like this, and then like this, and finally like this, you can rearrange the pieces like so, and wind up with the same four by eight bar, but with a leftover piece apparently created out of thin air. There's a popular animation of this illusion as well. I call it an illusion because it's just that, fake. In reality, the final bar is a bit smaller. It contains this much less chocolate. Each square along the cut is shorter than it was in the original, but the cut makes it difficult to notice right away. The animation is extra misleading because it tries to cover up its deception. The lost height of each each square is surreptitiously added in, while the piece moves to make it hard to notice. <laughs> I mean, come on, obviously, you cannot cut up a chocolate bar and rearrange the pieces into more than you started with. Or can you? One of the strangest theorems in modern mathematics is the banach tarski paradox. It proves that there is in fact a way to take an object and separate it into five different pieces. And then, with those five pieces, simply rearrange them, no stretching required, into two exact copies of the original item. Same density, same size, same everything. Seriously, to dive into the mind blow that it is and the way it fundamentally questions math and ourselves, we have to start by asking a few questions. First, what is infinity? A number? I mean, it's nowhere on the number line, but we often say things like, there's an infinite number of blah blah blah. And as far as we know, infinity could be real. The universe may be infinite in size and flat, extending out forever and ever without end, beyond even the part we can't observe or ever hope to observe. That's exactly what infinity is. Not a number per se, but rather a size. The size of something that doesn't end. Infinity is not the biggest number, instead, it is how many numbers there are. But there are different sizes of infinity. The smallest type of infinity is countable infinity, the number of hours in forever. It's also the number of whole numbers that there are, natural numbers, the numbers we use when counting things like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. Sets like these are unending, but they are countable. Countable means that you can count them from one element to any other in a finite amount of time. Even if that finite amount of time is longer than you will live, or the universe will exist for, it's still finite. Uncountable infinity, on the other hand, is literally bigger, too big to even count. The number of real numbers that there are, not just whole numbers, but all numbers, is uncountably infinite. You literally cannot count even from zero to one in a finite amount of time by naming every real number in between. I mean, where do you even start? Zero, okay, but what comes next? Zero point zero 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 zero. Eventually, we would imagine a one going somewhere at the end, but there is no end. We could always add another zero. Uncountability makes this set so much larger than the set of all whole numbers that even between zero and one, there are more numbers than there are whole numbers on the entire endless number line. Gero Cantor's famous diagonal argument helps illustrate this. Imagine listing every number between 0 and 1. Since they are uncountable and can't be listed in order, let's imagine randomly generating them forever with no repeats. Each number we generate can be paired with a whole number. If there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the two, that is if we can match one whole number to each real number on our list, that would mean that countable and uncountable sets are the same size. But we can't do that. Even though this list goes on forever, forever isn't enough. Watch this. If we go diagonally down our endless list of real numbers and take the first decimal of the first number and the second of the second number, the third of the third, and so on, and add one to each, subtracting one if it happens to be a nine, we can generate a new real number that is obviously between zero and one, but since we've defined it to be different from every number on our endless list and at least one place, it's clearly not contained in the list. In other words, we've used up every single whole number, the entire infinity of them, and yet we can still come up with more real numbers. Adapted Mind Math! Come explore the site with me! I'm in first grade, so... Our lives are small and can only scientifically consider a small part of reality. What's common for us is just a sliver of what's available. We can only see so much of the electromagnetic spectrum. We can only delve so deep into extensions of space. Common sense applies to that which we can access. But common sense is just that. Common. If total sense is what we want, we should be prepared to accept that we shouldn't call infinity weird or strange. The results we've arrived at by accepting it are valid. True.